Welcome back, everyone. Another week of Taurus Tech Talk here at SG Taurus. I'm your host, Matt LePan. This week, joined by our great senior technical support representative, Phil Valpy. Phil, welcome back to the podcast. Thanks, Matt. Today, Phil's going to be talking about something that folks are seeing a little bit less of, but it's something that I can almost guarantee you're going to see over the next three to six months, and that is converting an old R22 unit to R410A. Yeah, Matt, we've had a lot of R22 to 410A conversion talks over the past probably 15 years, and one of the major problems that we have is people think it can be just done with virtually no thought or nothing up front for work done. And let, let's go over some of, some of the basics. R22 you know, is a refrigerant that's been around 50 years, and it's let's just say its operating pressures are 225 and 70 pounds normal pressures. There aren't any really rules of thumb where R410A is, you know, 60% more pressure or higher pressure than than R22 so it requires a little bit different piping and some cleaning. Now let's let's talk about the cleaning first. When you've had an R22 system that's been in operation for 15, 20, 25, 30 years you'll run into piping that will become clogged with debris. When we're talking about the piping, the problem we have with R22 is there is a deposit of oil, call it brown sludge, that's inside and it doesn't come off during the operation of the R22. So when you have an old R22 three-ton system running at normal pressures and everything, it just constantly over the years has deposited this debris on the inside of the pipe. When you go and put a 410A system in, the chemical consistency of the 410A is different than the R22, and the 410A acts like a scouring pad or a Brillo pad and takes all of that debris and garbage that's inside the pipe and makes the inside of the pipe look like a brand new penny. But where does all the sludge go? It goes back in the system goes back to compressors, strainers, expansion valves, and that. So we have to make sure that when we put a new system in, that there's no sludge left. Now, that's very difficult when you've got pipes in walls and long pipes and underground pipes and pipes you can't get at. So the manufacturers over the years have said, hey, clean the pipes if you can, but if you can't clean the pipes, replace them. And a replacement pipe, of course, will look like a brand new penny inside and it won't have any debris and you'll be okay. So on the cleaning side of this, we have cleaners that can be used to try to get all that debris out. If you can flush the lines and get a clear flush when you're done, you probably can use that section of pipe for 410A. Okay. If we can't clean the lines, you are just going to keep running into problems and problems with compressors, etc. So if you can flush the lines, okay. If you can't, don't even try. Another thought on that is the actual size of the line. When you go to the piping charts for R22, you'll notice that the pressure drops are totally different than the pressure drop for 410A. Uh, R22, it's a a 3.5 suction line pressure drop and a uh, 35 pound liquid line pressure drop, where 410A is a a 5 pound pressure drop on the suction line and a 50 pound pressure drop on the liquid line. So that means that the piping for an R410A system can be smaller than 22, not larger. Now, that's kind, that kind of helps us because a larger pipe doesn't always hurt us if the old one was R22 and the new one is 410A. But sometimes, if you had an inch and an eighth pipe for R22 and it only calls for a three-quarter pipe on 410A, we may have an oil return problem. So size of pipe 
can be a problem, and that's another reason why the factory says probably should change the pipes. For one, the piping mode here, we've got systems that were put in in the 60s and the 70s that used soft solder. Soft solder is not allowed with our 410A. You'll run into the problem where the unit will, you'll start it up, run it, but when there's a problem with the 410A system and the pressure gets up to six or 700 pounds because the condenser fan motor goes, it'll blow that soft solder joint apart and of course the soft solder joint is in the wall and the homeowner is now very unhappy because you're gonna have to take the wall apart. And the fire department gets unhappy because they get the call in the middle of the night because it looks like the house is on fire and it's smoking. So any soft solder in a refrigerant pipe has to be redone with brazed or one of the new mechanical fittings. And you could even, if it was soft pipe, you could even flare it if you had to. So that's an, that's an issue where you must braze 410A pipe. So we talked about cleaning the pipe, size of the pipe, and brazing of the pipe. The next part is the indoor coil. Everybody wants to leave the air handler intact with the old R22 coil and just change the condenser outside. That's not a good idea. Most of the coils built before 1997 or 98 are not even approved for R410A and have not used the brazing on them that will hold, so they could burst. Some of the coils from, let's say, 97 on may say R22 or 410A. You could use them, but again, they have debris in them like we talked about earlier, and to flush out a coil is very difficult. Doing it in place is virtually impossible. You almost have to slide the coil out, take it out in the yard, and tip it upside down, fill it with flushing agent, turn it around, blow it out. So to try to get an R22 coil to work on 410A, we don't like it. Now, there are a lot of R22 coils that were put in that were never had, never had a condenser hooked up to it, so that's fine. We could use the coil itself because it will be clean inside. But if it's dirty inside, virtually impossible to clean it out. And again, the debris or the garbage that's inside it, which is this burned oil, etc., is going to clog up the 410A system. All the orifices, expansion valves, metering devices in 410A are smaller than 22, so they clog easier. So that talks about the coil. You know, the condenser piping outside the old R22 would probably be 3 8 3 quarter, 3 8 7 8 where the new 410A may only need 5 16 5 8 or 3 8 5 8 or 3 8 3 quarter. So you've got to be careful on the actual sizing of the pipe because, again, the refrigerants are totally different in their, in their compositions and their pressure. So with the 410A system, the best scenario, of course, is to replace the piping and the coil. But at, at the least, you must flush out all the lines you know, that the refrigerant is going to go through. That's some great information, Phil. I think that it's something that people aren't running into as much. But like I said at the beginning, I can almost guarantee that most of the folks out there listening, you're going to run into this conversion at some point in the next three to six months. You know, especially getting into cooling season here, coming over the summer. If you need any help, you can give Phil a call, Ken a call, Mark a call, Russell a call, and they'll be able to help you out as well. Yeah. So, you know, with this 410A conversion, and one other thought you have to do is the metering devices on the coils are set up for R22, not 410A. So you have to make sure that the metering device for 410A is put in place. The old R22 systems, a lot of them had fixed orifice where 98% of the 410A coils need a thermostatic expansion valve or an electronic expansion valve. So a conversion would be, of course, a thermostatic expansion valve. So you're going to have to pick the thermostatic expansion valve that's needed. There are some new 410A systems coming out that are using fixed orifice. 
and we may be able to use coils with fixed orifice, but you still have to get the right fixed orifice. So you got to pick the right equipment, and you know that's where we that's where we stand with that. Okay, man. Great. Well, thank you, Phil, and thank you everyone out there for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, anywhere you can find a podcast, you can find us. Just search Taurus Tech Talk. Follow along on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Use hashtag Taurus Tech Talk. And as always, you can catch all of our podcasts right on our website, sgtaurus.com backslash podcast. One thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Taurus Tech Talk.